was used for our replacement. All right, everyone. We can kind of move back to our seats, not to cut the conversation short. The conversation's really good. We can move back to our seats and get our next piece of program going. While we're, uh, while we're waiting to get back to our seats, I'm going to put a couple of, another couple of items in the uh, talking points. Um, I want to ask. Um, I want to ask everybody that it, um, just make sure if you haven't renewed your membership, would you please make sure to renew your membership? Um, your renewal is the lifeblood of the club, and we would just love to have you renew your membership. You have to take care of that. Um, don't forget your tickets. Um, we do have a bylaws committee that was formed. Uh, Mary Jean, former past president of the club, former president is uh, running that committee and if you're interested in uh, adjusting or uh, working on the bylaws she is looking for committee members to help her on the bylaws committee um, we do still have open positions in the club right now we're looking for a vice president as well as a pio uh, public information officer so if you know anybody that's interested in any one of those positions please let me or any one of the other board members know that you've got somebody that's interested in that um shameless plug for the signal report um, and with that, I want to turn it over to John. Tell us all about programming radios with software. Thanks, John. Real quick, Ham 101. We have 15 people tonight. Next month, we'd like to have 25 people. Come, you can learn something. I guarantee you. That's right. <laughs> uh, first off, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, I uh, just wanted to ask a few quick questions. How many people have made any CW contacts this past month? How many would you say you made? Uh, three. Okay. Cool. Uh, what about FT8 contacts? Anybody make any FT8 contacts? Anybody make more than 20? That's easy to do. More than a 50. Eric, more than 50? Okay. There's a method to my madness. Uh, net check-ins. How many people, you know, because we have nets every night, multiple nets in the area every night. How many people would say you've checked in to 50 or more nets during the past month? Month. I know there's people there. No. All right. No. Do I hear 60? 60. Probably down about 30. 30? 30. Yeah. Okay. What about single sideband contacts? How many have made more than 20? 50? Higher than 50. Ned? All right, uh, what about POTA activations? Parks on the air, anybody activate any parks? I know some of our gurus with POTA I don't see here tonight. And then I don't know if we have anybody that's done summits on the air. So, uh, the reason I'm asking is I'm thinking about starting a leaderboard every month, and I'm still kind of trying to formulate how I want to uh, collect this information, but uh, that way we can recognize everybody uh, who's out there getting on the air and being more radioactive, which happens to be this year's uh, field day theme. So I would encourage everybody to get on the air and uh, just want to recognize uh, everybody for doing their part. So uh, with that out of the way, next shameless plug, we'll uh, get into programming radios with software. Maybe. Programming presentation. Yeah, that's interesting. Been a night for this. There we go. changing, but not on the projector. There we go. Well, this, this is, they've got a newer version that's out. There we go. DJI. Uh, so some advantages why you might want to do uh, Program a radio with software that saves time by not having to manually program several channels through a keypad. True story, my first mobile radio was an ICOM 2300, and I searched everywhere for a programming cable and could not find one, and I was talking to Joe about it, that I had to program all of our 
local repeater list in manually, and uh, needless to say, he didn't really feel too sorry for me. Uh, because before the days of computers and programming cables, uh, that's how all radios were programmed. So, uh, provides uniformity as the same file can be imported to multiple radios and less prone to human error. So, uh, if you're using the same file and you're just simply importing a CSV file, uh, you know, you're not really manipulating much. And <coughs> Uh, disadvantages, you might not have the pro uh, programming device or interface handy, and some of it can cost. There's a great program that's free, but uh, it doesn't do everything. What is needed? You need, first off, a radio, a computer or mobile device, software, an interface cable or device, and the list of frequencies or repeaters you wish to load. For your programming cables, uh, most analog cables use a USB to serial cable. Uh, I put on there FTDI, you want to make sure that it has that chip in it. Most of them, most of the drivers are prolific. I will say you want to make sure if you're ordering one that you get one that works with Windows 11 if you're doing Windows 11 because there's been a difference and the driver that works with Windows 10 does not work with Windows 11, so make sure to read the fine print on that. FTDI cable is likely not going to cost, not likely going to be one of the $12 ones. Right. Uh, then a lot of your digital radios use regular USB cables, uh, either a B connector on the end, uh, like my uh, ICOM 7200 uses a B connection, uh, your mini USB, micro USB, or USB C. And then some are programmable via Bluetooth. And uh, I've got a picture down here of a uh, TID radio device that you can literally plug into the side. It's uh, USB chargeable and uh, you can offload frequencies via Bluetooth to your phone or tablet. So different kinds of software. Chirp, that's free, open source. It's updated very frequently. Uh, RT systems costs a little bit of money. Um, usually, uh, a lot of your Chinese radios, uh, you can do Chirp for free. Uh, Chirp doesn't always play nice with your ICOMs or your Yesus or Kenwoods, so you may want to invest in the RT system software. Uh, or manufacturer specific, usually free. I know on one of my ICOM radios, uh, I believe it was my 9700, I downloaded it there programming utility for free and was able to program it. Uh, the beauty of the chirp is you can program it once and done. You said it a minute ago. Yeah. And, and if it except if it works on the radio, it'll it'll go across the different radios. The only, right. only difference is some of the manufacturers and RT systems have a little more detailed settings capabilities. Right. Yeah. Does, we'll RT, does RT systems let you move the file and use the same file on multiple radios as well? Yes if it's the same make and model of radio. Uh, RT system seems to be more Very make specific. and model specific where Chirp is uh, generally tries to cover a wider but range do, of makes and models. They do sell the cables too if you just want the yeah. cable. And I actually went to Huntsville and uh, bought an ID52 a couple of years ago and uh, went RT systems, uh, bought their software and bought their cable and then I realized that their cable was nothing but a USB micro cable. So I paid extra for a cable that I read. I think RT now will even program some of the DMR radios. Mm -hmm. There's a little quirk to the cables too, if you're a DMR person. The plug is, it looks like what they call the Kenwood plug. But there's another component inside the cable. It's a rib, uh, uh, it's a non-rig, uh, a non-rib. It won't work on DMR, or at least it won't work on the two DMRs I have from different manufacturers. It takes a specific DMR, yeah. like my DMR guy. Uh, another way, uh, or another software, is just straight through the internet, um, R-Finder, I found this, this is really cool. Uh, with the R-Finder radio, you can actually go to a website, you program in your zones, your memories, everything that you want, and then you sync it because the R Finder has a cellular connection and it just, you sync it to radio and they're all there after. Expensive radio 
but cool little feature. Project, uh, you need a programming device that's going to be a PC, Mac, Linux, you use tablet, mobile device. Uh, list of frequencies to program, you can get those. Um, do we have the uh, Joe, the Aries list over here on the table? So we have a list of all the repeaters in the area right over here on this table if you don't already have one. Yeah. So it's on, on our website as well. Uh, repeater book, and then you know you may have other sources uh, for, for getting your repeater information. So this is my last uh, uh, slide here on this topic. Uh, if, if any of you have heard me do the uh, safety chapter for Joe's training classes, there's a section when working on a tower that you never work alone, and it repeats it slide after slide after slide. Well. My advice is always read the current memory of the radio before writing anything, <laughs> no matter what. And I'll repeat that, repeat that, repeat that. So always read the contents of your radio uh, before doing anything else. Read and save it. Yep, and save it. Absolutely. So with that, I did bring a radio. I don't know how well this demonstration would go. Um, this radio and... Uh, Wish I had a camera or something that I could project to show you all what's on it. But um, when I fire it up, it says Indianapolis 500 mile race, and uh, one says uh, IMSPA, which is for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, PA system, and the other is says Herda, last name, which was for a driver Brian Herda. Uh, the reason I show this, I have a headset that when I go to races, I plug into here. It's noise canceling, and I listen to the drivers and their crews. I want to know talk. what you're saying on PA. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to know. So, uh, well, you can't always hear when they're going by what the people, well, you know, what the announcers are saying. Oh, you're so. not talking on the PA. Yeah, I'm not talking. No, I've got transmit <coughs> disabled on it, so I can't hear. Yeah. So. Now. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Reverse course. <laughs> Yeah, next thing you know, uh, one of his favorite drivers hearing me say, slow down, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you going too fast. Uh, Make less noise. Away. So, again, the first thing that we're going to do is read the contents of this radio. And yet, I've also had problems at times where the cable doesn't always seat really well. So if you find that it's not communicating, uh, you might try reseating that. And here we're going to select UV5R. Turn the radio. Do what? Ah. Interesting. Darn. Struggles. <laughs> And you can see and I have a hex beam I need to put together. We are now reading the contents of the radio. But I have to take some tree limbs out there. Waiting for the guy to come with some tree limbs out. And so this is what this radio has. Like, well, I actually have the uh, uh, the weather radio on here for the Indianapolis area as well. But these are all drivers' last names, and I correspond with the drivers with their car numbers. So when I'm in the stands, it's easy to figure out who's who. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a save as and. Uh, oh, the internet is wonderful. I also do the same thing for NASCAR races if I go. So now that I've uh, uh, done that, I can go here and I want to import from a file. And let's see here, I have one. And it asks if I want to overwrite these memories. Actually, that. Oh, sorry. 
I need them. Uh, Don't in the way. The partition. Okay, so that you can go over here. Over here. So here's a list I just imported from a CSV file. One of the other things that you can look at is you can click on this settings tab. And you have different settings here that you can set. Um, like whether you want the display to show the frequency or the name. I personally prefer doing that on frequency, so I'm gonna go ahead and change those. Anyway, when you're done importing and, put, and you can manually type your frequencies in as well. It's just easier for me. Uh, uh, how many people here work with Excel? Because that's uh, that's how I you know manipulate my frequencies. I'll, I'll export them to a CSV and then open up Excel. One hundred percent, the best way to do. It. Yep. So now I'm going to uh, upload to radio, and this should be the same settings. So it is now sending this, so I can't take this radio to the Indy 500 right now. Good thing I got a few weeks until uh, I have to worry about that. But how quickly could you put it back to Indy? Well, we can do it here in a minute. And if I were to do a read on this, you will see that it's got the frequencies. The screen should look the same. Is this? That's not comparing. I'm just showing that the content. I'm now reading from the radio. Uh oh. Refuse the block. Let me reboot the radio. It's about. Yeah, it is. Everything is to reboot every now and then. And again, should see anything different that's the contents that I sent to the radio just a few minutes ago. Now, if I wanted to go back to what I, the way I had it before, this is what I read. This is the file that I read from the radio. I can open that up, go radio, download to radio. Then, once again, ready to go to the rest. So, just a quick question. Who all out there has used Chirp for RT system before? Me? What's that? I think it's working on my Mac. It doesn't work on the Mac, okay. That, that, that creates some special challenges. So, Hey, John, another one that I use a lot is that R Finder website. Yeah, yeah. Because what's nice about it is you can put in a city that you're going to and download all the frequencies in that area. Or what's really nice is if you're going on a trip, you can say, hey, I'm going like from Memphis to Atlanta. And it'll tell you, and you can say within a radius of your route what, what you know, repeaters you want and you can program all the repeaters yeah, along and that route. Your, yeah, and it can use your phone's GPS as well to pull all the local stuff. Well, but if you're doing it off but yeah, right. if you're doing it off the website so that you can right. down 
you get you get, if you're using the website, it's better for programming your radio. Which program was that? Our, our finder. finder. Our so, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. How it works. Can you go back to the programming screen that you had up there? Sure. I forget what they call the feature, but basically, if you're going to scan your frequency ah, things, you do not want to right. put in that, like weather band or whatever. Right. So, uh, this column right here that says skip, if you put an S in there and you put your radio in scan mode, it will skip that channel. And actually, I don't know if you noticed, but. And this is my Indy 500 file here. But this first channel was the NOAA radio, and I had an S in there because when I'm scanning for the drivers, I don't want it stopping on the National Weather Service radio every time. So great question. Anybody else? All right, I got something else just real quick that I wanted to show you guys. And... Uh, it fits right in line with what I've been talking about. Uh, Rick Tellman, I'm going to not call on you to come up here, but, but kind of put you on the spot a little bit. A couple of years ago when I was sharing that I'm such a diehard race car fan, um, Rick was telling me about this special event called W9IMS. And basically what it is, is there are three big events at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway every year. And this is a way to get some wallpaper or some QSL cards. So the way it works, you can make a contact uh, during the week, May 5th through 11th. That's the week that they run the Grand Prix. And, you, and that you can get a QSL card for that. You can get one for the Indy 500, May 20th through the 26th. Or you can get one for the NASCAR 200 at the Brickyard, July 15th through the 21st. If you work all three and you're in their logbook, you can get a frameable certificate. So just something fun to do. Um, and I'm trying to find things that I can present about just, just briefly uh, about that. And if you go to their QRZ page, it has all of the details regarding how to, uh, what you have to do about sending a self-addressed stamp envelope. And it also has a schedule of uh, what bands and what times they're operating on. So if you want to get some more wallpaper, check that out. That's all I got. Cool. Well, in interesting fact on that, a couple of years ago when we did, when the club did the special event for the Bicentennial for Memphis, it was during May and we had trouble, you know, with the, the, the people were, a lot of people were on the frequencies doing that event. Right. <laughs> And I think that's one of the few HF contacts that we made that we contact, I forgot which week it was, but we, we made a contact with them. So it was special event to special yeah. event that was kind of neat. Yeah. I actually checked in from my seat um, for the 500 one last year. <laughs> yeah. So fun times. So that's all I got. Well, thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to take a quick second here and put a shameless plug in for the renewals again since Jim walked in. If anybody has an application and your $20, Jim's back here in the back and will absolutely be glad to take the phone. So a shameless plug for those renewals or new member applications. Um, I would also ask again, I'm going to shamelessly plug our, our signal report. Um, I'd also ask you, there's a free form text field at the bottom. If there is a topic that you would like to see some information on, like programming radios or programming HF or HODA or something, put that down in the bottom free form text section so the leadership team can hear from you and say, hey, we're interested in something. So we can uh, work on our next month or the month after the program. Um, so with that, I'll just take a quick second. Are there any announcements that anybody would like to make? 
All right. Um, let's see. Joe? Yes, sir. How many? I know there's a couple of new students. Students from my last tech class. If you'd stand up. Stand up, Tim. Yeah, we introduced him at the beginning. We already broke it out. Again, again, there we go. There we go. We'll never not recognize our new hams again because they're the they're the lifeblood to us. So uh, appreciate you joining the hobby with us. Uh, I do have a, a personal question. How many of you would be interested in a programming activity before a club event to come out and program your HTs or something? You just have a parking lot party and everybody brings their HTs and we have some antennas out there and we program some HTs. Would that be an interest? Is that what Ham Hager does upstairs? Oh, that would be Ham 101, absolutely. But uh, he's talking HF. Are you doing uh, HTs? Hey, no, no, we'll get to some VHF stuff. Don't worry about All right. it. <laughs> Ham's got it. All right. Uh, at this time, I have nothing further and would entertain a motion to Take adjourn. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved by Ham to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Nope. All right. So moved. Is there any uh, all favor? All favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks so much. See you all in May. Thank you very much.